What side of stubborn are you going to stand on? I ask that question of my practice members. There's only two places to stand, the, st the side that's going to actually be beneficial and the other side that keeps you spinning your wheels. Welcome, I'm Dr. Lisa Ann Homick at Homick Advanced Chiropractic, and this is Brain Snob, Episode 6. Everyone should be a brain snob. Being a brain snob is not an insult, it is a high compliment, meaning you know how the brain works, so you can really harness your brain for a vibrant life. Your brain makes your body. Now, let's make an amazing life. So, I have the BFA map, Brain First Always. I have a map. If you're going on a journey, you should have some type of tool to help you. And the map makes perfect sense. My map tells you the three paths that you need to take together. I call them the three doorways. Enter all three of them so that you can have the vibrant brain. And it's uh, move your brain, feed your brain, and talk to your brain. Part of talking to your brain is making that decision. What side of stubborn are you going to stand on? Now, I should probably be telling you what side of stubborn do I stand on. And let me explain. I'm on a stubborn side. I, am, I intend to be stubborn. Um, you don't make a lot of friends this way, unfortunately, unless you can, people really listen and decide what you're doing is cool. It takes a while for that to sink into people, to s understand that being a brain snob is absolutely cool. I stand on the stubborn side of things that mainstream isn't interested in. I have a ketogenic diet. I follow that, and I'm crazy about it. Why? Because I've tried everything else, and this makes the real difference. So let's not call it the keto diet. Let's call it the human diet, and that is part of feeding your brain. And so I'm different, and people think I'm totally nuts, and I start talking to them, and whoosh, <laughs> they're like, "Come, okay, let's find another topic to talk about, because it's not on, any, on many people's radar. It's growing, though, so check it out. It's really helpful. You've got to pick your fuel, and there's clean fuel, and there's dirty fuel, and I'll teach you that in the office. It's part of the BFA program, Brain First Always. Move the brain. I discussed that in episode one. I'll discuss it more in, in future episodes, but you have to know what the chiropractic adjustment does for you. It does move your spine. So your spine can generate energy to your brain. Your spine works like a windmill. And if it's not working, you're depriving your brain of, of excellent energy. Talking to your brain is the third part. What side of stubborn are you going to stand on? So let me get back to that. What other side of stubborn? Um, not a fan of drugs, because most of them damage your mitochondria. Look it up. It is a very hard way to promote health when your mitochondria are dying. They're the energy factories of your cells. That it just it's not compatible with whatever whatever the re whatever the reason that drug was designed to do. Whatever way it was intended to manipulate your body chemistry, it's not, not compatible with your mitochondria. Your, your mitochondria will keep you energized. It, mitochondrial damage leads to aging, degeneration, and the big one is cancer. Cancer is the ultimate degeneration, and we don't want to have that. So I stand. Where else do I stand on this side of stubborn? Um... I'll think of more. I'll think of more. But the main thing is I don't do a lot of things I used to do. And one is I don't want to eat out anymore. I'm not interested because I know what's in the food. And I can do better at home. The restaurants, they're kind of stuck. They need to make things efficiently, quickly. Uh, food storage has to be you know, doable. And you can't do that and have healthy, non-inflaming foods. So that's another thing I don't do. I take a lot of supplements. 
I take a lot of standard process supplements. Why? Because they have the glandulars, they have the natural sources of vitamins and minerals, they come from plant sources and animal sources, and these are things not in our food supply anymore. The food supply is depleted. No matter where you live, no matter what you eat, no matter how organic, you've got a supplement. So that's another thing people think I'm not so over. Let me continue. I don't like to put out small fires. A lot of people come to the chiropractor because they have a small fire. To them it's not. To them it's all-encompassing. It's like taking their whole energy. And I'm talking about the typical things you have been programmed to go to the chiropractor for. You've been programmed to go if you have a stiff neck, if you have a headache, if you have back pain. That's great. I'm glad you're here. But it's a small fire most of the time. It's an annoying, frustrating fire most of the time. Why do I want to put out a small fire when there's a festering big fire underground? And that's the direction I want to take everybody in. Not a lot of people are interested in that. They want to be in and out of the office. Quick fix. There's no quick fix. Especially if you're full of inflammation and you have so much interference to your nervous system that your nervous system thinks it's stuck in the survival mode of fight or flight or it's so drained it can't even fight. And you can never get back to that healing stage of rest and digest, that calm stage. I need to help people get to that point again. And they have to see where they are at. And when you're lulled into that hypnotic state of learned helplessness, of brain drain, it's hard to get that new idea accepted by your executive functioning at the prefrontal cortex. So what am I saying? Let's translate that into English. If I'm saying something you've never heard before, your brain is going to just say, what? It's going to bounce off like an email that got rejected. Can't send it. Return to sender. If I talk about things in a different way, it takes a while to accept it. We don't have that kind of time to accept it. A lot of people are in crisis mode. A lot of people are in the emergency room. A lot of people are having uh, less... Not, if procedures like something that they can't wait for because they don't have time to heal it because it's gone far too long and that's kind of keeping me up at night I know a lot of people that are at that stage of there's a health crisis and nothing seems to work some things kind of give you the holding pattern but vibrant energy isn't coming back we have got to return to the focus. So for everybody else who's not in crisis mode, the water is rising. The dam just hasn't broken yet. And that's why on my Brain First Always map, and I haven't decided if I'm going to post it on my blog yet, it's a very handy uh, reference material that I want to talk with more in depth with people when they come in the office. But that is why... I have five quick, simple signs of brain impairment. And I mentioned that in episode five, maybe. But here they are. Fatigue, stiff joints, digestive problems, high blood pressure, and anxiety. And especially that anxiety I call brain fog frustration because it just keeps compounding. It snowballs. There's a snowball effect when you say, my memory's not working. I'm ang anxious about it. It's not working. I'm anxious. I'm staying anxious. The more anxious I get, the worse my memory problems get. That is inflammation. It's also insulation. Insulation is my word for insulin and inflammation. Because if your insulin is high, your body's in an inflamed state of crisis. And it's going to be in fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, it's very hard to calm it down. And I want to teach people how to do that. You've got to have the, the fight or flight has to be available for the real emergencies. When you're really in survival mode, it has to be very brief. And it has to be a real danger. Most of the stress we deal with is not real danger. It's usually drama and worrying 
and getting everything done. Uh, sure, it's job related, it's financial related. Uh, we got to fix the house, we got to fix the car, we got to get the kids where they need to go. That's a lot of stress. It's not survival stress, but it's still affecting the body in that fight or flight as if you're in survival mode. So we have to calm the brain down. So those five points, those five simple signs of brain impairment, we take for granted. Oh, I'm tired. Maybe I won't be tired tomorrow. Okay, my joints are stiff. They're not stiff all the time. They're only stiff when I uh, get dehydrated or I don't get enough sleep or I do too much yard work. Really? No, you're stiff because you have inflammation. Digestive problems. Oh, only when I eat certain foods. Um, high blood pressure. Well, the doctor's watching it. I might go on medication later on. It's slowly creeping up and I have no idea why. And uh, back to anxiety. Those simple signs of brain impairment, that's the water rising. It's the water rising, but you don't know the dam is going to break until the dam actually breaks. And I want to get two people before the dam breaks. So while the water is rising, pay attention and take advantage of the BFA map, brain first always, so we can address these things. They all have underlying similarities. So we don't have to get into the specifics. We don't need to have a crazy diagnosis. We don't have to have a lot of different trials of different therapies other than chiropractic, which is not a therapy. Chiropractic is a brain boosting practice. And a practice is something we want to do and do often. It's on the BFA map. So I'm going to end this episode while you come up with your questions, because I go through this so fast that people don't know how to connect the dots, and I apologize for that. I get way too excited, and connecting the dots is kind of difficult. So I want to get a spark going. I want to ignite that little thought spark in your brain and hopefully inspire you to ask me more questions. And I'll give you a copy of the brain map and give you some coaching about how to follow the brain map, what things to do, and why I set them up the way I set them up, because there's a method to my madness. Thank you for watching episode six, and look forward to episode seven. I'm really glad you've hung around. I'm trying to do it without a crazy script, so I don't sound boring and monotone, but I'm glad that you're here. Let me give you my closing script. Sorry, still have to do it. Let's dive in to a better future with a better brain. Learn how to move, feed, and talk to your brain. Visit the office. Read my blog. It's called createpurpose.com. Watch the orientation video. Start a conversation in the comments section. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. And look for the next episode. Become a brain snob and be a positive ripple effect in your community. Thanks for watching.